Hello students. Today's topic is how price ceilings affect market outcomes. Price ceiling. It is a legal maximum on the price at which a good can be sold. That means the maximum price set by the government which can be charged by the seller. Let's understand this concept with the help of an example. Suppose the ice cream buyers file a complaint against ice cream sellers for charging higher prices or unfair prices. In a response, the government imposes a price ceiling on the market for ice cream. That means the government has set the maximum price that can be charged by the ice cream seller. Now, two outcomes are possible. Let's see the first outcome. Here we have two axes. On the vertical axis, we have taken price of ice cream cone. And on the horizontal axis, we have taken quantity of ice cream cones. This is the demand curve. This is the supply curve. The intersection point of demand and supply curve is equilibrium point. Dollar three is assumed as equilibrium price. And 100 ice cream cones is assumed as equilibrium quantity. So earlier consumers were paying $3 as their market price. And they filed a complaint to the government that this is an unfair price charged by the ice cream seller. In a response, the government imposed a price ceiling. As you can see that the government has imposed this price ceiling. Now you can observe that this maximum price or this price ceiling set by the government is above the equilibrium price. Let's take it as dollar four. I think the main purpose or the main agenda of setting this price ceiling is not fulfilled because market forces naturally move the economy towards the equilibrium right and this price ceiling will have no effect on the price and the quantity sold that means if earlier consumers were ended up paying dollar three as their market price now in this case also they will end up paying dollar three as their market price and that is the reason we can term this case as a price ceiling that is not binding. It is not a binding constraint on the market. Now let's see the other outcome. Again, we have the same situation that the consumers, uh, right now the consumers are paying $3 as their market price. And uh, they raised a complaint to the government that the ice cream sellers are charging higher prices. And in a response, the government will impose a price ceiling. So as you can see that the government has imposed this price ceiling. But this time, this price ceiling is set below the equilibrium price. Let's take it as dollar $2. Now the main agenda, the main purpose of setting the price ceiling is fulfilled. Because when the market forces will tend to move the economy towards the equilibrium and when the market price hits this price ceiling, the price can rise no further. Because according to law, it is mandated that this is the maximum price that can be charged by the seller. Dollar two is the maximum price that can be charged by the seller. Clear? And that is the reason. We can term this case as a price ceiling that is binding. It is a binding constraint on the market. Clear? 
Now, at this price, quantity supplied is up to this level. So, this is assumed as the quantity supplied and quantity demanded is up to this level. So, this is assumed as quantity demanded. You can see that the level of quantity demanded is greater than quantity supplied by this portion. This portion will be termed as excess demand or shortage. When a shortage of ice cream develops because of this price ceiling, some mechanism for rationing ice cream will naturally develop. The mechanism could be long lines. Buyers who are willing to arrive early and wait in a line get a cone, but those unwilling to wait do not get a cone. Alternatively, sellers could ration ice cream according to their own personal biases. That means selling it only to friends, relatives or members of their own racial or ethnic group. The rationing mechanisms that develop under price ceilings are rarely desirable because long lines are inefficient because they waste bias time. And discrimination according to seller bias is both inefficient and potentially unfair. By contrast, the rationing mechanism in a free competitive market is both efficient and impersonal. Because when the market for ice cream reaches its equilibrium, anyone who wants to pay the market price can get a cone. That means at the equilibrium we know that the willingness to pay is equal to the willingness to sell. So anyone who wants to pay the market price can get a cone. Clear? Thank you.